Hey there, folks. So recently, Funny Playing sent me a uh, care package of sorts. Uh, they had in there some like prototypes of some of the new stuff they're coming out with. They had uh, some production samples of some of the stuff they're coming out with, and then there was some other stuff uh, like the final I, uh, IPS laminated kit that I did just do a video on. Um, but I suppose by the time this video makes it up, it's going to be a distant memory. But anyway, one of the things in this care package that really caught my eye, something that I've, I've been kind of, uh, excited for, for a while, you know, and like just totally flabbergasted on what their plans are for this are this. So funny playing sent a brand new Game Boy Advance motherboard. Uh, if you take a look at this, you might notice quite a few differences with the original Game Boy Advance motherboard. Um, notably, most of the parts are totally different. Uh, so this cart reader, you might look at this go, oh yeah, that looks, you know, hey, it looks like they are salvaging parts. You know, why didn't they give us a CPU and RAM? Ah, you'd be mistaken, because the cart reader on these things are brand new from Funny Playing. They're making brand new cart readers uh, that they are shipping with these motherboards. I don't know what the end goal is. I don't know if this is the end goal, but I am just, they, they have my full attention. Uh, one of my concerns that I did already bring up with them was that I noticed the pins on the cart reader, they're just bare copper. So I don't know uh, long term how that's going to hold up. Copper will work harden. Uh, but copper is also a highly reactive metal, uh, so it's going to patina, which if you have a housing made of copper, you know, who cares? It's going to look cool. If you have an electrical contact made of bare copper, not so much. Um, right now, I can say it does work pretty decently, but, you know, what's to say it's going to keep working in, in five years or so? Um, next thing you might notice, there are LEDs all over this board. Yeah, my friends, it's got full RGB. So they made brand new cart readers. I believe they made brand new link ports. Um, I don't know if these are new old stock because these are the same like rubber type uh, shoulder buttons that the normal GBA uses. I don't know if these are new old stock or if they had those made too. Um, We've got the same volume wheel, a different headphone jack, but hopefully this one will prove to be a little bit more reliable. Uh, totally different amp, totally different amp, totally different power management circuit, and I have no idea what that is, but that, well actually this one's probably power management. Um, and then that one's probably the microcontroller for the LEDs or something, I don't know. One of the two, I'll have to look these up. There are parts numbers on them, uh, but I don't want to get too much into that. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into building this thing. Let's make a GBA. So last time we were on this path, um, I was doing a stream live and uh, I was trying to solder a GBA CPU onto a GBA motherboard and it wasn't going too well. That was this CPU. I still have this thing on my desk because of course I do. Uh, the problem I ran into is for some reason the bottom of it was um, bulged out. Um, and the thought process at the time was, oh, this must just be a bad CPU. So I literally just chucked it up onto the shelf above my desk and left it there and I pull it out every now and then to reference it. And quite frankly, it's a miracle that all of the pins are still intact. Oops. Especially with me doing stuff like that. I just had to say something, didn't I? Ah. Well, hang on. I was, <laughs> I'm going to try and save it, but, um, oh my God, I dropped it again. Okay. Let me try and clean this up. Okay, this thing is going to straight give me more trouble than it's worth, but I think I got them mostly straightened out. Um, they're still a little bit bendy, but we'll try our best. Uh, but before I start soldering that on, I still have the original board it came off of. And 
you'll have to excuse me for assuming the CPU was bad because quite frankly, just look at this board. Like, was that a was that a bad assumption? It looked like this before I got it, and here's the other board that I actually ended up sourcing the CPU from for that uh, N64 Freak build. Uh, but first, we need to extract this RAM. And I'm going to do that with hot... Oops. There's a connector there. I'm going to do that with hot air, and hopefully I don't melt this, but if I do, who cares, because it's totally corroded. Uh, on the other boards that I've done, I highly recommend just removing the port entirely if you're going to use hot air to do this, but I'm not worried about destroying this port, so whatever. Oh! I was wondering why it wasn't getting hotter. I had the temperature set to 250. And that's it. Okay, let's try that again. Now it is my understanding that the RAM isn't really paired to the CPU, you could just use any RAM you, you can find, uh, but I literally already have a donor board with the CPU missing, I might as well use the RAM from it too. Uh, but that's all we will be doing with the hot air, so I'm going to set this aside. I guess I'll start with it, warm up. Oh, let's get it lined up first, huh? Almost there. Get some fresh flux on there. time getting solder to stick to the board. I still see plenty of gold. I wonder if I should have just pre-tinned all of the pads beforehand. Probably would have made things easier. At least it's lined up. Oh, also, 
in the off chance this thing does ever actually make it to market and you guys are thinking of building your own, I highly recommend just starting with a working Game Boy. That way you don't have to play guess and, guess and check when it uh, inevitably doesn't work on the first try. That's nuts. I just soldered on all of those pins and maybe three or three of them are soldered down. There we go, that's looking better. A little bit. There we go. That looks good. At least that side does. big old solder ball over it until it wets the pads too. Gosh, now we're in, I don't know what to do aside from swapping tips. Yeah, screw it. Let me uh, take a quick break, swap tips, and we'll be back. All right, so rather than wait for my iron to cool down and then swap the tip, I just grabbed another iron. Um, it, was, it was easier. I happened to have the surface mount, um, like, kind of chisel. It's... it's it's not exactly a, a, a flat angle. There's like a ball shape in there that holds a little bit more solder. Uh, it's actually really, really nice for drag soldering. Um, it's not the tip I had in mind, but it actually works out a little bit better because this is a better tip for this. Uh, but anyway, I was able to finally get that done. Um, my problem was not that I was having trouble clearing bridges. It was that I was having trouble getting solder to wet to some of the pads underneath the chips because um, my my soldering iron just wasn't making any contact and, and some of the legs, I guess, are a little bit bent. So I'm probably going to have a lot of trouble with this thing, but I'm going to try it anyway and see what happens, I guess. Oh no. Let's see how much I can bend the legs on this poor CPU. I'm just gonna try and get it lined up as best I can and then tack down one of the corners and then just keep working my way around. Four-sided chips are the worst. Ooh, we need some flux. Oh, 
Nope, that's my thumb. That's not the chip. That's mostly soldered down. And all the other sides are surprisingly mostly aligned. Yeah, that looks good. Screw it, let's send it. So the nice thing about this tip is you can just like load it up with a ball of solder and then just slide it around in the flux and the solder will go exactly where it needs to go. It's great. Usually. But I think I'm going to have the same problem where those pads aren't quite tinned. I have to walk it back and forth several times. Oh, there we go, I got it that time. Easy, and then we'll come back and clean up shorts later. That wasn't too bad. Uh, and despite having these PCB holders, I have to hold this thing just to get it at the right angle to see and to film. There's one stubborn pin that's not wetting. There it goes. And right now I'm just trying to get every pin wet. I don't care if it's actually soldered down. I have no idea why the casing was bulging on this CPU, but this is not the first CPU transplant I've performed with a CPU that had a bulging casing, uh, and all of those transplants seem to have worked just fine, so I think the CPU that I've been writing off as broken for almost a year is 
probably going to be totally fine. So hopefully, hopefully that's the case. All right, and that side is nice and soldered. I didn't see any shorts. This bottom side, I think I'm gonna have to do under the microscope because quite a few of those pins were bent. But otherwise, there's no shorts. Shorts cleaned up here as well. Easy. And last but not least, top. Easy peasy. Yeah, quite a few of the pins on the bottom side don't look like they're actually soldered down. Some of them look to be straight missing their pads. It's kind of hard to see, but that's... That's the result of me dropping the CPU right as I started filming. This would have gone so smooth had I not done that. Alright. I'm gonna pause real quick and get this inspected under the microscope, and uh, if there's any problems, well, I'll unpause and we'll discuss. Alright, so I did need to do a little bit of cleanup of the pins uh, that I tried straightening out after I dropped it, but. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Let me go ahead and tilt that up and you can see exactly what's going on there. Uh, so you can see those last four pins are misaligned. I got the fourth one in aligned pretty darn good. And then the uh, last three I got aligned good enough. Um, but otherwise I think we're good to go. There were a few other pins that required um, some double checking, like on the top left of the SRAM and the bottom right of the SRAM. Uh, I don't know if those pins are actually connected to anything, but it looked pretty darn good otherwise. Uh, and then all the other sides of the CPU looked pretty good. So I think we're good to go. So next step is going to be to clean up all of this flux. Uh, this was always gonna be kind of a pain in the butt, but you know, it's, it's where we're at. Um, but before doing that, I suppose, let's test it out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the panel frames, I guess. And let me get a kit that we can plug into this thing. I don't think this will work with an OEM screen anymore. Um, Personally, I don't mind. I thought I had a kit. Let me find that. All right, it was underneath everything. All right. So this transfer, this new board is based off the 32 pin, not the 40 pin. Uh, likely to make everything easier with all of these kits. All right, and hopefully we don't turn it on and just let the smoke out. That would kind of suck. But full disclosure, I do have another one of these boards that I have already assembled. Um, mostly because I didn't want to break the video flow while I waited for this to clean and then dry. Uh, so let's try it out. A. Hey, you like them apples? Okay, let's try a test drive. And I've got one right here. Let's try it. 
try the aging ROM. holding that when it boots otherwise it won't boot because <laughs> this backlight kit is not in the best condition it does work though Self test. Let's try that. If we can get there. Oh no! That wasn't what I wanted. Try it again. Test program. We want aging cartridge. Hey, look at that. We're good to go. Let me flip that off. All right, so I am satisfied that this works. Uh, so my next step is going to be to give this thing a clean up, get all of this flux out of here. Uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, um, I'm going to be using the ultrasonic cleaner for this. Uh, that means that this Game Boy is going to be out of commission for the duration of that process. And I don't really want to do it right now, so I'm just going to use another one of these things that I've already built and already cleaned up. Because, damn, I know if I assemble this right now, this is never getting cleaned up. But I've got another one that I've already assembled, so we're going to use this one. Um, I assembled one of these off camera because I wanted to play with it and make sure. And, you know, I knew as soon as I got this assembled, I'd want to go do the build. And I do want to go do the build. So let me gather the remaining parts and we'll start that. All right, so before anyone accuses me of pulling a sneaky on you, it's not a sneaky if I fully disclose that I have another fully assembled and working motherboard. Uh, I did get this one soldered together last night, um, and I did already run it through a cleaning cycle. Uh, there was one, one thing that I discovered with these new cart switches, uh, the new cart slots, is this switch that is built into them um, on this particular motherboard, this switch kept getting jammed. So what that meant was the first time I inserted a Game Boy Color game, it just booted in Game Boy Color mode from then on. Uh, so I had to pull the whole cart switch, whole cart slot out, and then I had to extract the cart switch from the slot. And then uh, I just ended up lubing up the uh, slider mechanism with a little bit of dielectric grease and then reassembled it and it seems to be working as expected now. Uh, this one I did already test, and this one already works as expected. Same thing with the sample that Funny Playing sent me. That one already works as expected. So I think it was just a one-off, but I don't know. Just in case it comes up, here it is. I use the exact same revision CPU on both of these, but they have totally different RAM. So the, the uh, keen-eyed among you might notice if I didn't say anything anyway. So set that aside. That one's going in the drink for some cleaning. Uh, but otherwise, let's let's do a build. Um, I have had sitting in my parts bin for entirely too long a time. Oh, it just fell out as I picked it up. A brand new funny playing kit, but with no screen. Uh, a 9380 kit specifically. Uh, so when I say brand new, I mean it's been sitting in the parts bin for for probably a few years. Um, if I remember correctly, this specific kit, it's missing the screen because I ended up pulling the screen out of here to throw in a slate. So I have a completely intact older style 9380 kit. Um, and then 
I just got from Funny Playing one of the samples of their brand new LCDs. Uh, looks like they sent a batch to Retro Game Repair Shop for checking out, and RGRS sent one to me. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna take a look. Uh, but this is a brand new, newly manufactured 9380 LCD that Funny Playing is shipping with their kits. And I did already update my um, imager album with the different types of screens. Uh, but the primary way to tell these apart is these have a little bit of silver on the connector itself. Um, that's, that's the easiest thing to look at, but there are quite a few other things. Uh, anyway, we're also going to be using this mirror clear shell because I also happen to have this on hand. Uh, and it should work out pretty nicely because this is one of the older style shells as well, so it's not even compatible with the ITA kits. Uh, so, I don't know, it should be pretty good. But we're gonna do clear on front. I'll set those aside. And then red on back. Um, yeah. I think that, I mean, I guess it's going to look a bit like a Pokeball, but I think it'll be pretty cool with the black motherboard in there. Um, well, I suppose I should test this first off because I did just say this has been sitting in the parts bin. Totally untested. So let's make sure it actually works with this board. <laughs> I don't expect to have any problems, but why chance fate, you know? Hey, we're good to go. So yeah, I'll use this kit. I totally forgot to install a speaker. I suppose I should do that. So thankfully, I had my very last funny playing Game Boy Advance speaker. Uh, we don't want to use the OEM speaker on this because this is a different amp is much, much louder than stock. Um, and so we want to use a speaker that can actually handle that. So that's what this is for. I think it's a little weird that the motherboard didn't come with one, but it could also just be um, that this is a engineering sample and not at all representative of the final packaging, however they intend to package these things, which is true, it is that. It is an engineering sample, so. Oh, I need to go find a lens for this before I continue because I need to peel off that. All right, went and grabbed my lens bag and saw these uh, KOF glass lenses that I was really excited to try out, but it's not an IPS size lens. Uh, so I'm going to stick with uh, tried, and, tried and true here. Um, all right. this stuff goes in. I'm pretty sure it goes just like that. Yeah. The install on these bad boys is pretty easy. We can get this adhesive peeled off. We want to only peel off the front and we want to leave 
the center square in there. Just like that. And then we can come in here. Get that lined up. And drop that in. We'll get these edges squished down. And then we can just pop the center out. And save that for more shenanigans later. And now that thing just needs to go in there, just like that. But, I think I'm going to stick the lens down first. center out of there. Probably would have made my life easier just peel that plastic off ahead of time. Oh, especially since I totally missed. loads easier. I gotta peel this off next. just goes in there. Easy peasy. <laughs> this kit clearly wasn't designed for this uh, motherboard because I'm gonna have to do the the folding nonsense. But I think we should be good. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to get it wired up. So the wire they ship is actually going to be way too long because we only have to go to right there on these new motherboards instead of having to find these test points over here. I'm just deciding if I want to try and shorten these. Just send them like that. I think I'll try shortening one. save those three for the uh, other side that I got to do. I still don't have wire strippers that work on this. I keep forgetting that. Right, I'm going to trim that down. I'll solder these as is and then hopefully I'll figure something out.
This is going to be folded, so I think I should do it this way. And nothing a solder ball can't fix. As far as stripping the wires down goes. So this one right here is select. This one right here is L. Which makes this last one R. Easy peasy. Oh, we need buttons. Where are my buttons? I had buttons set aside for this. One of these days. I'll be able to go five minutes without losing something. It's going to be great. I've got some custom buttons made by my bud retro CNC. I think they're going to look sick as heck in this build. Get the light pipe. That clipped in. Get 
this wire the other side of that connector. There we go. I can fold that down. We'll crease that, should make my life easier. No idea how to get this speaker lined up. Come on. There we go. Alright, and because I'm threading into plastic, I'm going to bring them all the way down nice and tight and then back them up a quarter turn so that we're not over tightening them. And I think that's that. Um, just need these. an OEM power switch in there, why not? Oh, that doesn't... that barely doesn't line up. That's interesting. Alright, we'll not use an OEM power switch. Wish I had a red one. that orange one. I gotta see what happened to that orange one. Alright, whatever. We'll just stick with black for now.
There we go. Now that's all. Every time with the spinning battery. Ah. Alright, so I have brightness controls for the LED kit, or for the backlight kit. I have no idea how the onboard RGB works though. But the Game Boy itself, hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe it'll grow on me, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure yet. Let's try. Let's try some games, I guess. I don't expect to see any. Um, Oh, you know what? Actually, yes, let's try this game, but let me get my power supply plugged in instead. Because uh, uh, I never actually tested power usage. Like, I, I couldn't do a before test because, well, it didn't work before. Um, I need my adapter. There it is. Look at this in. So I can plug this in. And I guess I'll just try holding that there and hope for the best. Uh, 2.4 volts on the default brightness whatever that is totally forgotten and with the same game I almost always usually test this with in the same place I always test it with it is pulling 284 258 to 284 milliamps which is a lot but not, I mean, most of that's going to be the backlight kit. I doubt the uh, LEDs are doing much. Well, there you go. I don't know that I have much else to add. So this is a uh, an older style shell with an older style backlight kit, but with their brand new motherboard. I think it's pretty neat, but uh, I don't have anything to add, like functionality wise. It's gonna be a GBA. No. Do I not get anything now? Nope, gotta spin the batteries again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know if it needs cleaning or... Oh, there's already a game in it. Uh, I don't know if it might be the batteries being dirty or some garbage. I don't know. Um... I guess we'll start Golden Sun because that's the last thing that I played on this.
And you can see how this looks on IPS kits. You know, nice, normal spring day, so on and so forth. Yeah, I don't have too much to say about this kit itself. I think I've already said all I need to say about it. Uh, this shell, I think I've also said all I need to say about it. Uh, you can't get these things anymore. They just don't make this style. This was the 93 only, or 9380 only variant. Uh, they phased it out soon after for the uh, Combo 9380 ITA unit, which I'm guessing they just phased out for the <laughs> laminated versions. Um, but the laminated versions don't come in this mere clear finish, which is what I wanted. Um, I mean, you, you've got this stupid, cool motherboard. Why wouldn't you want to show it off? Um, something I should have totally forgot to take a look at uh, until right this second. But let me turn this up. And you hear it's... You can probably hear that it's plenty loud. Uh, nothing too particular about that. Let me fire up this Pokemon game. And this is about as loud as a normal GBA gets, but this isn't as loud as this GBA gets. So I'm gonna bring it in game here. Oh, just kidding. We have to walk through a new game because I never imported my save. Either way, you got the music. We'll go ahead and turn it up to the max. That's that. I'm gonna turn that down. We're gonna try out a regular GBA now. No, we're not, because this doesn't have a battery in it. Oh my goodness. I think this swing has a battery in it. Oh. There it goes. This is max volume on this thing. But this is a normal, regular GBA motherboard. I'm gonna hit new game there. Oh, and of course it's different music. I don't know why I didn't think of that. All right. So that's the normal GBA. This is about as loud as they normally get. I don't know where the microphone is, if it's at the top or the bottom. And then here's this thing. I can't even hear that this one is on. <laughs> it is significantly louder. Uh, but I guess that's pretty much all I can talk about. Um, I don't know what Funny Playing's plans are for this thing. Um, my understanding is they intend to sell them exactly like I showed off at the beginning of the video. So if you buy one of these things, you get this motherboard with no CPU and no RAM. Like, I'm pretty sure that's how they intend to, to sell these things. And the intent is, you know, you can, you can buy one of these if you're confident that you can solder on your CPU and your RAM. Uh, I don't know that they're going to be offering any pre-assembled variants. Um, I don't know. They also haven't published any instructions on this because, uh, as far as I can tell, they haven't even teased this thing yet. Uh, so I have no idea if there are other RGB modes. I, I tried poking around some button combos I thought it might be. Uh, clearly it's not going to be select because that would be for, uh, the backlight kit. So I would assume start in LNR maybe, but... I don't know, nothing seems to do anything. At least nothing that I've been able to try. Um, but if you guys have any ideas, feel free to hit me up. I'm glad to try it out. But otherwise, I'm really, really pleased with this thing so far. Um, the GBA I started with, I did the stream on this pre-release ITA kit a while back. And this is one of the GBAs that I pulled out of the the bin to try and 
use as a donor. Uh, and when I saw this junk and the power switch literally fell out, I just put it away and moved on. Uh, but I pulled the CPU and SRAM out of it, and that's what's in this thing right now. So that's one way to fix the GBA, I guess. I'll probably extract the cart reader, see if I can clean those pins up, and then save it for spare parts. Maybe the cart reader goes in this thing too, if I find the uh, copper pins ever start giving me hassle. Uh, same thing with this thing. I mean, you saw the donor board that I got the SRAM off of. That's where the CPU came from as well. Um, just a lot longer ago. Uh, but otherwise, everything else is already done for you. You just have to solder on those two parts, clean it, and then assemble it, and you're done. And as long as you do a good enough job soldering, it just it just works. Like, there's no issues. Um, Let's try out Game Boy Color. Just works. Just switches. And one of the things... I don't know if they took advantage of this, uh, but I did notice when I tried these boards out in advance, you know, I, I plugged it into power and I tried turn it on with no CPU to see what would happen. We just got a power light, nothing else came on, no RGB, nothing, which makes sense, you know, lights are on but nobody's home, sort of thing. Uh, and as soon as I dropped a CPU on there, I started getting the RGB stuff. So I don't know if Funny Playing did this, but it would be really neat if they did, if they tied into the CPU itself, you know, depending on what the CPU is doing for different colors. And I notice I have a red LED because my batteries are almost dead. Um, but that's about it. Uh, otherwise, it's still just pulsing in and out, cycling through the colors. I don't know how to change it. But everything seems to work as far as I can tell. Uh, ooh, let's try multi -boot. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Because that just plugs direct into the CPU, but let's try it anyway. Got brand new link ports on there and everything. Ah. There's only so much we can do with the uh, old link port on the wireless adapter, though. It's entirely possible it just doesn't work. Yeah, I'm not ready to rule out multi-boot not working yet because there's no reason it wouldn't work on this one. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so that one for sure works. So we'll try this again. I don't know if it's going to work. I think we're SOL. Alright, so maybe no, no multi-boot, but that's not really a commonly used feature, so silver lining. Uh, but it also could just be that my wireless adapters suck and aren't triggering multi-boot. I know for a fact that this is a brand new port, so I suppose next we'll want to try out um, if uh, linking works. Don't expect any issues, but we'll try it anyway. I also expected multi boot to work, and that didn't work.
Oh, how convenient. Nothing. Yeah, I don't know if it's a mechanical problem or an electrical one. I'd have to uh, figure out some way to pulse the pins and, and hook up some like LEDs for troubleshooting. We saw this one went into wireless, no problem. Oh, just kidding. Yeah, I can't rule it out right now, um, but I'm not having any luck. I'll have to fuss with it some more. Um, Another thing that might or might not be working properly is sleep mode, and I don't even know how to begin testing that. I suppose we can try booting a patched game, Let's see if that does anything. So if we go into the settings, we can enable the sleep add-on, save that, and then, uh, I've totally forgotten the, um, the shortcut, what's a game we can start, let's try that one, oh shoot, I didn't start it with add-on, have it. Yeah, it doesn't say what the shortcut is. It's unfortunate. That would make things easy, wouldn't it? Boot with add-on. There we go. Let me look up what the combo is. It just occurred to me that the sleep was literally on that menu. Uh, so it should be LR select and it should go into sleep mode. But it doesn't. My RGB is still pulsing and then start and select should wake it. And it does, okay. So the CPU halts, it seems, but it doesn't, it's not going into sleep mode properly, which means it should be shutting down the 5 volt line, and it's not doing that. So I'm going to try that again. And yeah. That's all we get. So let's pull that out of sleep mode, and just, you know, to make sure that I'm not interpreting these results incorrectly, let's try this on... The other GBA that I put a new motherboard in with the exact same LCD kit. So this one is that, um, I think it's N64 Freak. Oh, good lord. Uh, let's start that with add on. And then, what was it, LR select? Yeah, so as you can see, the um, in sleep mode, the screen is supposed to shut off. And the screen does indeed shut off on this one, because this one's based off of the OEM GBA. 
just like that. So, a little bit of work that Funny Playing needs to do still, I think, but it'll get there eventually, and that'll come off with enough elbow grease, so I'll clean that later. Uh, but otherwise, you know what? This is pretty solid so far. Yeah, there's little things that need improvement, but you know what? This is fantastic, because like I said, you know, my other GBA, there was... This is probably a bad example because this one looks totally fixable. Uh, oh no, never mind. Now I remember why I didn't bother. When I flipped it over and realized all of these vias were worn off because, uh, or just totally eaten away from uh, corrosion. These are all power rails. I did not want to have to bother troubleshooting that. So I just lifted the CPU and RAM off, threw it on here and it just works. So yeah, for boards like this, this is absolutely fantastic. I I love this idea, I love this concept, and I love this execution. I just think there's a little bit more work, a little bit more work to be done before we can call it a uh, suitable replacement. Uh, another board that I have that I was considering using for this, you know, you can see it's all corroded down in this bottom left here, and then there's some of the pins on the CPU that are corroded. but. As far as damage goes, it's actually pretty minor, so I think I might just try cleaning this one up and, and see what happens. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I'm super stoked for these boards to materialize. Um, by the time I publish this video, there should be some information out there about there, out there about these. So at that point, I will throw some links in the description um, hopefully. Otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for sticking with me, guys, and uh, I'll catch you all next time. All right, a few addendums before we uh, finish this out here. I've uh, been playing with this for a little bit, and I, I have some feedback, and I did also talk to Funny Playing about some of the, the issues I had with it, um, as well as asking for some additional instructions. And I have four more things I want to cover. So first off, Something I totally forgot to cover in the uh, first part of this video is OEM screen compatibility. So my initial thought was who cares if it works with OEM screens because anyone who's building one of these things is almost definitely using a LCD kit. And well, it's kind of there. So let me go ahead and boot this up and you can see it kind of works, but the... Um, the calibration is exceptionally off. So we'll go into the test here and uh, was it LCD unit checker? I think it was. Yeah, so we can pull up the standard flicker test here and you can see that it does sorta work, but every time I hit the R button, the screen just goes nuts. Um, I don't think this is something we can fix with calibration. I think this is just something that um, we're going to have to deal with because it's just straight missing uh, some voltage rails. But let me go ahead and get my screwdriver in here and we'll see if tweaking that potentiometer does anything worthwhile. And actually it does, so we can we can try calibrating the screen, but I don't know if it's going to get us to a usable calibration. Um, it, it just has god-awful ghosting. Um, maybe if you tweak it enough, you'll you'll get something usable. In fact, this looks significantly better than it did before already, so maybe we're almost there, maybe not, but either way, it works mostly, but if you're getting this far, then this is just a, a, a poor decision on your part, I think. Um, anyway, Easy enough, let's move on to the next thing, which was the link port. So I was complaining about the link port not working. I wasn't able to get it working, uh, but as it turns out, the problem was there was actually an issue with this board. And as it turns out, there is likely an issue with this one as well. Uh, but as you can see, I got it working. If we go into there, you can see it's this Ooh, error occurred. Ooh, maybe it's not working. Um, 
Either way, it's working better than it was. Let me reseat that just in case. And there is no game in there. It's multi-boot. Uh, again, old link port. Uh, well, the link port's not old, but the connector on the wireless adapter is, and I have certainly never cleaned it. So it's possible I'm having issues with my wireless adapter. We'll have to play with that a little bit more with an actual link cable in a minute. Uh, but first I want to show you what the specific problem was. Uh, so I, I spoke with Funny Playing about this and um, as it turns out, there is actually a manufacturing defect on the boards that they sent me. Um, it is my understanding that they have, now that I've pointed it out to them, uh, d uh, corrected this defect for the boards they intend to ship. But the problem is just a matter of the, the solder joints on these two um, filter components here just kind of suck. Um, actually, this board looks like it's fine. And I haven't corrected this one. Uh, but we'll walk through the steps anyway, just in case. Um, it's not going to hurt anything trying to correct it, so... All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with my nice wide K-tip and hit all three of these joints with solder at the exact same time and give it some nice big chunky fillets. And that one kind of sucks. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to do that for uh, all sides on both of them. It is, again, my understanding that the production boards won't have this problem, but these aren't production boards. These are pre-production or engineering sample, as it were. And I have already gone through these steps on the other one. Um, so it's also entirely possible that I didn't do a good enough job and I need to pop it open again and touch it up again. But realistically, if it doesn't work, I just don't care because I'm I've got I've got dozens of Game Boys. If I need to link up, I have I have stuff I can use. <laughs> And I'm having a hard time. I would, this would be so much easier if I used some flux, but I just, I don't want to have to clean this board again. I'll just keep feeding fresh solder in until it works. And there we go. That should be it, at least for this one. See, I've got nice, clean fillets on there. And so this board, if it didn't work, it should now, at least with the link port. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Next, let us discuss... I think I tried out sleep mode in a game that it wasn't supported on, and I showed you guys uh, how this board handles sleep. On an OEM Game Boy Advance, when you put the console into sleep mode on a supported game, uh, it entirely shuts off the 5 volt rail of the console, which in Game Boy Advance games means um, it's going to shut down pretty much all the peripherals because nothing supports 5 volts. Uh, however, this doesn't support that. Um, but Funny Playing did think of this and they already implemented a workaround. I just didn't know about it. So let's, let me show that off. Let me grab, I'm actually going to grab Pokemon Emeralds here. This is a stock game, um, OEM, completely unmodified, aside from the fact that I have an aftermarket housing on it and an aftermarket sticker. We'll pop that in there. And as you can see, it boots right up, no issues. We can go into the game here, and let me show you what Funny Playing told me. 
They informed me that there is actually a button shortcut you can press that is A, B, and select. Maybe. Was it A, B, start? No, it was A, B, select. There it is. And then it puts the console to sleep. You can tell it's asleep because I still have the power light, but the screen, the amplifier, and all of the lighting has totally switched off. That's not to say that the actual game is asleep because this game doesn't support sleep. So if I'm holding the down arrow or the down direction and then I wake it with AB select, uh, oh, go figure. Didn't do it this time. Let's try sleeping again. There it is. I haven't quite figured out the specific, um, I don't know if there's an order of operations or, um, you know, a specific timing for it, but I can't get it to sleep reliably, but I can get it to wake reliably. And I swear, earlier when I was testing this, it was still sending inputs to the game. Now it does not appear to be doing that, so I'm gonna have to eat crow on that. But you can at least hear, you know, the audio shuts off. Um, come on. I have the same problem with my power supply all the time, where I, I don't hit the buttons within the, the requisite millisecond. I think you have to trigger all three within a few milliseconds, and I just... I don't have the hand-eye coordination for that, apparently. But I'm holding the over arrow because I want to see what happens, and it does not appear to be sending inputs, which... That's news to me. I, I thought it still sent the inputs. That's actually really neat. But you can see it shuts off the screen just fine. Uh, it should result in quite... Mm, actually, I don't want to say significant power savings uh, because the game itself is still running. It's just... It hasn't halted any of the code. It's still executing. In fact, if we get the link port working and I connect this up, you should see that it doesn't actually drop out. Um, in fact, let's try it right now. Let's see what happens. Is this the wireless? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to fuss with this one more. Um, I have been told it should work fine, and I have no reason to doubt Funny Playing, uh, because... It just connects up straight to the CPU. Like there, there's no components between the link port. It's it's native to the CPU itself. So as long as everything is physically connected, there's not going to be any problems. And I think my problem right now is that it's just not physically connected. But I bet if I were to wire up this Game Boy or this board, it would work perfectly fine. But that's a little bit more effort than I wanted to put into this addendum. Um, you'll have to take my word for it. If nothing else, the production board should be good. And even if they're not, you still have to solder the CPU onto this thing. I think if it's within your abilities to solder the CPU, it's within your abilities to fix the link port. Uh, so moving on to the last thing I wanted to bring up, which was the lighting controls for the buttons. Um, now, I misunderstood funny playing at first because, unfortunately, English is not their native language, uh, at least for the gentleman I was speaking to, and, um, well, they misled me. But, if you hold A and B, it should cycle through the lighting modes. So we have off. We have this purple-ish color. It doesn't appear to be like pulsing or glowing or anything and I don't know if there's a way to change this or anything. Um, we'll cycle that one more time and then it should go into the pulsing mode and there it is. And in this pulsing mode uh, the color uh, fades in and out and I believe the color change. yeah there it goes. Uh, so the color fades in and out, and then the specific color values change. Uh, now, if you're seeing flickering on the video itself, I don't see that flickering in person. That just happens to be uh, the frequency of the PWM LEDs lining up nicely with um, my capture here. 
Um, but in person, I don't, I don't see any flickering. And then the last one, I believe, is solid color mode, which is what I had it on before. And I don't know if there's a way to cycle this. I think it would be neat if you like held A and then tap B or something. Or I don't know, maybe they have to wire up another button for this. But as far as I can tell, there's no there's no way to change the color, but this could be pre-production board issues. Um, or maybe this is the one this is the mode where you can change the color. Or it just so happens to be that there's four modes built in. I got purple lights, white lights. Um, and then all of them, and then nothing. But either way, I'm genuinely looking forward to what they come up with. Uh, this is this is turning out really well. I think they could use a few more modes for the LEDs. I think they could use a few more controls for them, because it would be nice to have the same amount of control we have with like the Game Boy Color kits. Uh, but one more thing I quickly want to go over, because I have yet another goodie from Funny Playing here. Uh, but this is their Game Boy Color flash cart that should be releasing relatively soon. Uh, the nice thing about this, and I'll do a separate video on this, give you a little bit more details. This is more of just a sneak peek. I wanted a Game Boy Color game specifically so I could show you this functionality. Uh, but we'll go in here, we'll boot it up. Same Game Boy problems, am I right? There it goes. You'd, you'd think literally all of this hardware is brand new. The housings, the boards, the connectors. No, that's just the problem that you get with uh, physical connectors like this. Anyway, we can play through crystal clear, no problem. Uh, RTC in this game is work well that's a bad example because there's no seconds here and i don't really want to hold it there for a minute solid waiting for that to tick over but you'll have to trust me when i say oh there it goes now it's 226. um the point of booting this up is that i wanted to show that sleep mode works in game boy color games too Ta-da! how neat is that so because they implemented sleep at the board level, if you can manage to trigger it consistently, there it goes, you can actually sleep your Game Boy Color games. Uh, now granted, if I knock this about the wrong way, it is going to totally crash on me uh, because Game Boys don't like when you remove the game, but nah, nah, nah. as far as I know, this is the single only console. No, that's not true. Because <laughs> the analog pocket also supports sleep. Uh, but the way the analog pocket does sleep is a little bit different than this thing. Oh my goodness. There it goes. The way the analog pocket does sleep is it actually takes a save state of the game and stores it to internal memory and then puts everything in a low power state um, and shuts off most of the hardware. But this thing, the CPU is still running the game. Uh, so like I said, if I had a working link port and if I had it actually linked up to another Game Boy, you'd see that the link is still active, but I just can't send any inputs to the game. I can't listen to any of the sound coming out of it and I can't see what's going on because that's all shut off. And apparently I just learned um, I can't send inputs to the game. I thought the inputs were still connected, but I guess they're all the inputs are running through one of these chips over here. Uh, that's what I'm guessing that whole diode or um, yeah, I think those are diodes plus those resistors. I think that's what that's for. That's just the the cheap level shifter way of sending the inputs through a microcontroller that doesn't necessarily support the voltage level that the buttons are normally running at for the Game Boy SoC. Uh, but anyway, all in all, really neat board. Uh, ooh, ooh, didn't wake up that time. Not totally anyway. There it goes. Took a few tries, but we got it. 
<laughs> and that could just be a bug with this backlight kit. I know this is actually an older backlight kit. Um, I don't know if Funny Playing even tested it with this backlight kit because they've made like four different versions since then and there hasn't been a single update to this backlight kit yet. Um, but anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that clears up some of the speculation that was um, wrong <laughs> that I did in the first half of this video and uh, I hope this uh, clears up some of the features. Again, this is a pre-production board. Um, this was a sample for me to try out and, and, and test and give feedback on, and I think I have given some feedback. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully it's good feedback because uh, you guys should have working link ports going forward. <laughs> and uh, hopefully a few more LED modes. It's, it just seems silly to me to build in the support for these RGB LEDs and then not give you a way to control the specific color. Uh, but again, there might be a button combo that I'm just not triggering properly or don't know about. Um, but as far as I can tell, there isn't. And even if there is, mine's a pre-production board and it just might not have all the features that the final one will have um, because Funny Playing has done that before. They've sent me pre-production boards to get my feedback that don't have the full feature stack implemented. Like, oh, I don't know, remember that... Well, this is the wrong GBA. But remember that laminated 3.0 uh, IPS kit I checked out? That wasn't feature complete either. Um, but they still sent it to me for some feedback, and they certainly got feedback. Uh, anyway... That's all I've got. Uh, I have no idea when these things are going up for sale, but based on the fact that it's basically feature complete and maybe they just have a few touch-ups to do on some solder joints and maybe new firmware for the LED controller, it's pretty much done as far as I can tell. So these should be going up for sale relatively soon. Um, knowing Funny Playing, they're going to hold release on this thing if they are planning on releasing it with something else uh, like maybe they have new shells coming out maybe they want to release it with those new shells um, I certainly think it looks wicked cool in these uh, like mirror finish clear shells and to my knowledge funny playing currently does not make these anymore so uh, I mean if it were up to me I would certainly hold off on releasing these until I started making these again, but that's just speculation on my part. Anyway, that's all I've got. Um, I By the time this video goes up, there probably won't be any links in the description because I'm planning on putting this up tomorrow and it's not out yet. As far as I know, I'm the only one with this, um, aside from funny playing themselves. Uh, and with with their permission i will be sharing it not not just because i want to um but by the time this stuff does come out uh if you end up wandering over to my video and um yeah i'll i'll update the description when this stuff comes out is what i'm trying to say uh anyway that's all i've got thanks for watching thanks for putting up with me and and sticking with me this far and uh i'll catch you all next time <laughs>